name is Jose Ortiz, uh, flight paramedic with MedFly Air Ambulance. Today we're just going to talk about uh, loading and offloading a patient from the aircraft and uh, proper technique and, and what to look for when loading. So a couple of things I would just want to talk about with um, as far as off the ambulance. We want to make sure that the nurse, uh, when we pull up to the, the airport here, pull up to the plane, that we have one of the personnel staying with the patient in the ambulance. So that makes us critical care. We have to have one, one of our uh, medical care team with the patient at all times. So once we're here at the airport, we can start to offload our equipment first and get that into the plane. So a couple of things I want to point out as far as getting the plane ready for, for loading, we can obviously bring all of our equipment on. We want to make sure that we're putting all non-essential equipment all the way in the aft compartment in the back. I want to make sure that this seat is actually pushed all the way rear as it can. And we're going to bring both of the backs of the seats down so that if we have to, to load equipment over them, we can. The other thing I want to point out, if we're going to have a patient that's using oxygen, I want to make sure I go inside and turn on the oxygen. And usually I'll, I'll uh, communicate to the pilots if we're going to need uh, power to the sled uh, before the flight. That way they know before they get into their check ride list as far as uh, getting that turned on. Um, again, we have obviously in the, the prior videos, we talked about the door and, and making sure that we have our, our, uh, our rods in place. I'm also going to take this chair that's the um, airway chair and I'm going to take the pad off of it. So this is going to give us a little bit of room as far as moving the sled onto the, onto the gurney. And I'm just going to leave this to the side here. This plate is going to be set down so that we can actually slide everything on. So this is kind of getting everything ready as far as uh, our setup for loading. Um, again, making sure that your oxygen is on and that you have your regulator ready to go if that patient is on oxygen or that you have the proper hookup to get to plug into the oxygen. It, and oh, one other thing I just want to point out, if, they're, if you're using your first in bag, make sure that that's set out, that we have the equipment that you're, that's going to be essential. Make sure you, you are thinking about that and logistics of what, what needs to be out. The other thing I want to point out is um, if you feel like you're going to use your vent bag, leave that out as well. Um, it's, once we get everything loaded and we get um, passengers on the plane, it's going to be hard to get to that aft compartment. So let's make sure that we, we kind of think about what equipment we're using. Okay, so we're back at the plane. Once we've had, we've loaded our equipment, we've got our situation uh, as far as our equipment ready to go. The other thing I wanted to mention is we usually, if we're taking a passenger with us, a family member, we're going to have them on the plane prior to loading the patient. And usually that passenger is going to be in the aft, in the aft seat to the, all the way to the left um, so that they're, they're ready positioned before we load the patient on. So once we're ready to go, we're going to, uh, we're going to make sure that we're bringing the patient to the ambulance. Um, usually the, the primary, the uh, flight medic is going to be positioned right where I am. So this is a good place to post so we can kind of watch our, our door frame and make sure that our uh, gaskets aren't going to be hit. Um, and usually our other EMS providers that are helping are going to be uh, where Greg is right now and if we have additional on the side. Our uh, second in command pilot is usually going to be right here where Aaron is and he's ready to, to help with the gurney. And then we have Corey inside, right inside the door, um, who's going to be helping lifting up on the gurney itself as well. So while we bring the gurney up, some points to remember. We want to make sure that we're taking all of the gurney seat belts off and that we're not we're making sure that they're not hitting anything and that they're not caught underneath our uh, underneath the sled that's going to load onto the plane. Again this patient has a non-rebreather so we want to make sure that we have proper oxygen set up for that patient. You can see I'm taking off and Greg has already taken off the shorter blue straps that are retaining the the top Sled to the gurney. We're going to drop our, our uh, side rail to the gurney. And I'm also going to, we want to make sure that we can bring the patient as flat as possible without causing discomfort because we want to make sure that we're clearing the upper part of the doorway. A patient sitting upright is not going to clear that door and we have the, the chance of them hitting their head. Um, the other thing we want to make sure is that you know all of our IV pumps, all of our equipment is accounted for and that we don't have any kind of cables, 
Our nasal cannula is not, uh, our line isn't hanging down. If we have IV pumps, we want to make sure that they're on the patient and secure and not able to fall off when we're transferring the gurney. Um, the gurney, as you can see, is in the upright position, so it's all the way as high as it can go as far as loading. Um, and we are at almost a 45 degree angle to the door. That's always a good practice because we're going to be loading at an angle going in on the sled. So once we have this position, I like to kind of put my, put a foot here by the wheel to make sure that I'm kind of keeping the, the gurney stable. We're going to make sure that we're verbalizing to each other when to lift and, and if everybody is ready to go. That's probably one of the most important things is just verbalization on this loading. So once we're ready, Everybody ready? Grab the blue. Nurse is ready. ready. So Corey's got the, the, the bottom side of the, of, the, of the sled here, and that's important to make sure that she's able to lift on that. And we're going to be supporting, again, pointing out the door jams to the, 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 the non-flight team so they're aware of what not to hit. Okay, so on three. Everybody ready? One, two, three. So we're going to lift, taking it nice and slow. So once the patient is in, we're going to back the gurney away. You can see Aaron is going to position that, that sled so that it locks into place. We want to ensure that it's locked into place, making sure these latches are in on that. We're going to bring the patient to the upright position as soon as possible. And then we're going to make sure we have our O2 going and get that patient hooked up. And again, we can start getting our monitors into place and making sure that the, that we're, the patient is comfortable and, and, and belted in correctly for the flight. Um, once we have everything on, now we can start loading our other equipment that we're going to have uh, essential to the flight. So our first in bag, um, we can actually either post here on the seat. One thing I want to point out to everybody is that we, we want to make sure that whatever is loose, we want to make sure that we, we are securing it in some capacity. So if there's bags that we can put, we have extenders under the seat here, so we can put the first in bag in the aft seat if we need to, or on this seat putting some extenders on the seat belt so that we can get around the first in bag. Um, the cooler, same thing. I know uh, a lot of times that's left loose, but any potential stuff that can fly around in flight is not a good thing. So we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're cinching down everything that we possibly could for the flight. Am I missing anything, guys? Netting. Okay. Netting. So yeah, that, that's another thing I wanted to point out. A lot of crew members aren't aware that in one of the, the one of the same bags that sometimes has the uh, seatbelt extenders, one of the small black bags, we actually have some netting. So here's our extenders, and we have two now, so you could use one for the aft, aft seat in the back, and you could put one up here if there's multiple backpacks or a first in bag. We have this netting, so we could actually put over everything, hooking into these round eyelets that are located here on the floor, and we can make sure that everything is secure and that if we were uh, to have to make any kind of rapid descent, things aren't going to fly around. So, um, per FAA regulation, we should be using netting and everything being secure for flight. Okay, so continuing on, we so we've got our patient onto the plane, and now we just want to make sure that all of our equipment is stowed properly for the flight. So, um, we want to make sure, for instance, like this bag, we want to make sure that every that our first in bag is actually stowed either in the aft seat in the back with the belt extenders or if we're going to have it here in the front we want to make sure that it's going to be belted down. So one option that we have is under the seat in one of the black bags we have cargo netting that is located with the seat belt extenders. There's, we have two seat belt extenders in, in uh, one of the, the black bags and we also have cargo netting. So just zooming in on this stat you could see that we've set up the cargo netting on the seat here. So Aaron has put the seat, the seat cushion back into place. He's setting up the red bag here. We've utilized our little eyelets here. We have one eyelet here and one in the back, and there's two on the, the back rail against the wall, and then you have one up here. So we can properly secure this whole red bag with the cargo netting um, and it, any other loose backpack. Sometimes the, the pilots have their, their flight bags with them and we could put under the netting. Um, if we could possibly get the cooler in the same place, that would be great, just so everything is, is cinched down for flight. So once we have everything ready, 
um, we want again we're just going to cinch everything down and then we can uh, properly uh, take off in a safe back again we're talking about uh, loading a patient utilizing our uh, loading ramp a uh, couple of things to note about our loading ramps we have two that are based here in the hangar at the airport we have one that's always in the one of the back doors in the ambulance and uh, we have uh, one at the base uh, as well so there we have a total of four so as far as uh, getting the ramp ready any patient that is going to be over 200 pounds it is mandatory that we use the ramp of course, the ramp can be used on any patient if you feel like you want to use the ramp. Uh, it is actually safer, it can save your back, so there's less lifting involved. So uh, w one of the ways you can do that is if you're at the hospital and you find that the patient's gonna be heavy or you feel like you, uh, you, you're gonna use the ramp, you can always have dispatch call the pilots at the airport and, and so they can have it ready at the aircraft for when you get here so you can, it'll be a little bit quicker as far as getting it ready. So removing it from the bag, Greg is going to just be holding it back down. I'm just going to bring it out. You want to always do this clear of the door there because uh, you don't want to lift this out of the bag underneath the door and, and hit the aircraft. So once I have it out, you can see that it actually opens up. We're going to make sure that we open it all the way up. This leg extender is going to be all the way out. You want to make sure that that's all the way open. Uh, and then you're going to get it ready to post in the aircraft. So a couple of things with the aircraft. Again, we're gonna remove our seat cushion. It's gonna be stowed up and then we're gonna make sure our back bracket on the, uh, the sled is ready. And then there we go. And we're gonna just, that our round part is gonna go right into its fitting there. Again, we're gonna have the ramp at an angle so that the stretcher can miss the door jams. So this is ready to go. The other thing you wanna always make sure is that there, there's a little locking mechanism here. In order for it to, to accommodate, you want to make sure that this is down so that the, it can act, the patient can, can come all the way up. So that is down, this is ready to go. So now we're bringing the patient to, to the ramp. Again, we're just going to make sure that we're taking all of our gurney belts off, getting everything appropriately ready. The patient is on oxygen, so we're going to make sure that we have oxygen available on the aircraft. Put this on the patient so we can load onto. Okay, so all of our blue straps are off. Our rail, our bed rails are down. And if we have additional help, we're gonna have out here. And one, another important point about the ramp is you always wanna make sure your personnel are stationed in the aircraft prior to putting on the ramp. Or if that's not done, you can actually move the ramp to the side to accommodate personnel getting in and shifting it the opposite way if the nurse is not on as well. Okay, so we're ready with the, with the ramp. We wanna make sure that the gurney is lined up approximately at the same angle that the ramp is. And then we're gonna communicate with each other. You can see that there's gonna be a little bit of a lifting action to get past the lip of the, the ramp at the beginning. And then it's a matter of sliding the patient up, up along the ramp. Are we ready? One, two, three. So we're on and we're going to continue sliding the patient. Once the patient is on, we can just continue to slide upwards into the aircraft. So the gurney comes out of the way and then we're going to go ahead and release the ramp out of place. And we want to make sure that we're if the patient was over 200 pounds, the ramp needs to come with us so that um, if we're continuing to another destination, we have the ramp. If we're dropping off, obviously if we're, um, so we want to make sure that we're taking the ramp with us. Our 47 will actually, the, the ramp will stow in a, in a compartment in the back and we'll, we'll shoot some video on that. Otherwise, it's got to go inside the aft compartment or in the center aisle of the plane. Usually this is kind of a two-person job to get it properly loaded and back into the bag. And 
that is it with the ramp operation. Okay, so continuing on with uh, offloading a patient utilizing the ramp, uh, I just wanted to point out uh, there's always gloves. We have mechanic work gloves that are located in one of the black bags that's under the airway chair. So you have one bag that has the cargo netting and seatbelt extenders, and there should be a second bag that has uh, four pair of, of working gloves. Um, always try to use these when you're utilizing the ramp because you have a tendency to pinch your fingers underneath underneath the, um, the, the stretcher uh, as you're coming out. Okay, so we're, we're ready. We've, we've dropped everything. We, we're locked into place. Um, we've communicated with the EMS about where we need them and uh, we're ready to offload the patient. So one of the most important things is having somebody stabilize our gurney at the, over here at the head because the, the gurney is going to slide back. So at least one person to actually hold the gurney so it doesn't slide as we get the, as we get the, the patient uh, loaded onto the gurney. Okay, so we're ready with, the, with everything. Are we ready guys? We're ready. Okay, so we're coming out. We're going to come out nice and slow. Good communication. Okay, we're gonna, so we're gonna come down the sled. One thing I wanted to point out, um, there's some lo a locking mechanism that's underneath. If you tend to get caught here with your patient and it doesn't seem like, the, like you're, um, you're going forward at all, there's actually a locking mechanism that's, that's here midway down the ramp. That always needs to be flat. If, it, if it's um, facing upward, you're actually gonna stop, you're gonna stop the, the sled from moving forward. So I'm coming out with the patient, nice and slow. And again, we're on the gurney, so now we're just gonna lock everything down, properly belting everything up. And we're gonna make sure that we're putting on our blue straps back onto the gurney. It's always a good idea to try to get everything cinched down before you start moving the patient away from the aircraft. So try to get everything belted down. So we're properly loaded and we're making our way to the ambulance. All right, so continuing on with our uh, loading videos, I just wanted to touch base on uh, the storage of our ramp onto uh, tail number 47. So 47 is our only aircraft where we can actually put our ramp onto the, um, into our aft compartment here on the exterior of the aircraft. So I just wanted to go over proper operation of actually opening this drawer. So one of the most important things is this lever here, there's a pin that's, that's locking into the slot. This has to be with two fingers, you want to deep pull back on this lever and you're going to bring it down and that's going to unlock this latch. You have a second latch that is over here, but I'm going to go ahead and just do this one first. So on this one, you're just going to bring it up and that's going to release there. Again, just remember that um, the most apt one is, is the lever that has the pin. So once that is in place, you're going to depress this button and it's going to bring our handle out. And you can see there's a little arrow here that says open. So I'm just going to rotate this out and it's going to bring our compartment out. Once the compartment is out, I want to make sure that I'm bringing it as far out as possible or else this upper door is not going to open. There are some red latches here that are, need to be released. So as you can see, I'm just pushing these over to the left and these are what's locking down this, la this hatch here. So once those are all up, I can bring this door up and we can actually store our ramp into this compartment. 
so we want to make sure that this is the only thing that's in here besides some of the pilot books and, and but we don't want to store uh, a lot of equipment back here um, the other thing I wanted to touch base on is we only put the wrap in here for a specific flight so once the foot once we're back here at base and we're done with the flight this is not to be left in here so we want to bring the wrap the ramp back out and and place it either wh wherever we got it from from the ambulance or here in the hangar but it is not to remain on the plane this uh, there's specific weight and balances with the aircraft and so the mechanic the mechanics do not want this left on the aircraft okay okay so we we put our ramp in this compartment again I just want to remind all crew members this compartment on the outside is not pressurized um, heated or cooled so uh, we don't want any liquids or anything else out here we just want the ramp specifically and and there's some pilot books that are left in here as well so proper closure of this latch we're going to just bring it down slowly remember all of these exterior surfaces and compartments are very gentle they're they're aircraft they're um, they're aircraft aluminum so we want to be gentle nothing needs to be forced if something is being forced we're usually um, we're not doing it right so I'm going to bring this latch down I'm going to just bring all these latches into the locking position again. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this whole compartment forward. And I wanna make sure it kinda clicks into place. So as you can see, it gave me a little bit of resistance because this handle wasn't all the way up. So we wanna make sure that that handle is in. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this into place. So that needs to be snapped into place. So that button is actually activated there. And then I'm going to go ahead and place this latch back down again so that it's covering the door. And you can see the point of this latch is matching up with the closed arrow here so that we know that's properly shut. And one of the most important parts um, is with this pin. So as I bring this down, uh, you can see that there's a little pin here. I want to make sure I'm pulling back on this lever and then not having that pin pop back into place. Uh, just for your information, this if this is not properly seated, um, we have a air, uh, light indicator in the aircraft saying that one of the doors is open. So we're not able to take off if this is not in the right position. So once that's in, our, we should have a, a lights out uh, up front in the cockpit for the pilots. So um, that, just, again, make sure that this is set into place. Uh, another thing is make sure that when you, you're bringing this up that you are depressing it. If you happen to force this and you break this pin, we're, we're pretty much gonna be grounded from flying. So we wanna make sure that it's gonna disable the aircraft. So we wanna make sure that that pin is pulled back and when we actually bring it into place, it's seated in the proper position.